This is CBS News Bay Area with Juliet Goodrich. Hello and good evening. I'm Sarah Donshi and for Juliet. Tomorrow is all about the turkey and today is about the travel it takes to earn it. And if you're flying out of the Bay Area, it's not looking like too much of an ordeal this time. Nationwide, this Thanksgiving weekend is expected to be one of the busiest ever. Not so out of SFO right now. Yeah, we got here earlier. I thought because I thought it was going to be busier and I thought the freeway was going to be busier, but it wasn't as packed as I thought. Travelers who opted for Oakland have also been sailing through security lines for much of the day. San Jose Mineta went as far as hiring extra air traffic controllers for the holiday. Tonight, no significant delays to report there. So are people just hitting the roads instead? Not according to what we're seeing on Bay Area bridges right now, at least not at this hour. But if you have friends and family driving up from L.A., they are probably stuck in a huge mess. There is a 20-mile backup on I-5 through the grapevine after a semi spilled a load of metal pipes in the northbound lanes. For people who are moving through traffic, watch yourself because CHP is watching too. They're ramping up patrols tonight looking for speeders and drunk drivers. But as Brian Hackney shows us, distracted driving can be just as dangerous. You're about to see a classic example of an epidemic, the epidemic of distracted driving. That's how a lot of crashes happen. There's a lot of crashes we go to that are caused um, by distracted driving. We're joining CHP officer Alex Ochoa at the outset of his daily patrol. I'll start looking right away, you know, to see if people are looking at their phone, if they're texting or even if they're holding it up to their ear or up to their mouth. In fact, 25% of drivers reported watching movies or video clips while driving in just the last month. Especially teenagers, they'll be doing TikTok videos or Snapchat videos on their phone while they're driving. I've had people um, driving with their knees and dual thumb texting, <laughs> you know. What can happen next has been documented by AAA. The number of scenes like this is only increasing. I've been to a crash where uh, there was actually a fatality, and then I've been to multiple crashes where it's broken bones. In 2021, 3,500 people died in distracted driving crashes. And even though it's mostly associated with teenagers, millennials aged 25 to 34, in fact, had the highest rates of watching videos, playing games, and scrolling social media while driving. Officer Ochoa remembers one in particular. I was watching him for about a good, like, 30 seconds where, you know, his attention was not focused on the road at all, and that's more than enough time to have something really bad happen really quick. And it's not just phones. Oh, yeah. People could be distracted by, you know, the screens in the cars, um, if there's debris in the roadway, or you have bad drivers that you have to watch out for, or impaired drivers. There are, you know, plenty of DUI drivers out here, too. So if you're joining the 50 million people on the road this weekend, be sure to watch this and not this. Otherwise... The maximum enforcement period started about an hour ago. It will continue until midnight Sunday. First, it was vandalism. Then two days later came the fire that ripped through Oakland's famed Horn Barbecue. You'd think they'd be busy trying to figure out how to recover, but instead, today, they are giving back to the community. Horn staff was out in front of the charred restaurant today, handing out free turkeys and pies to those in need. Celebrity chef Tyler Florence came out to help. Oakland's new fire chief was also there. Uh, we need more um, community businesses that really care and give back. As we all know, uh, the need is greater than it's ever been, especially here in Oakland. So it means everything to us that Horn will continue to, to operate and, and care about our community even through this disaster. It isn't just Thanksgiving. The chief says Horns is known to give out food at the end of the day to people who may not otherwise have a meal. It is truly all hands on deck this weekend to prevent this kind of rush on San Francisco stores. Leslie Gooden shows us how state money meant to stop smash and grabs is being put to use in San Francisco. Police department will be out here in force. With the holidays here, California is cracking down on retail theft. And San Francisco Police Department and District Attorney Jenkins are going into this season with more hands and resources to combat the smash and grab trend. The San Francisco Police Department, as a part of this grant, was awarded $15 million, which will assist them in being able to staff, 
officers in our business corridors. <laughs> On Wednesday, we saw San Francisco police and armed security guards in front of nearly every major retail store. We will prosecute those who commit crime in this city, and that includes organized retail theft. The question now is whether the crackdown will be enough to bring shoppers back. Chani Chang is visiting from China to do some shopping. She says she is noticing difference. Last uh, policeman here, but the city is much uh, cleaner and especially the smell. I'm quite sensitive with the smell. So yeah, the smell is much better. And merchants are hoping that highly visible police patrols and officers working undercover will be enough to spark holiday sales. Uh, the shoppers uh, should have no fears coming out here. Uh, there'll be a lot of police officers on hand at the intersections and throughout the Union Square area. And officials say that shoppers too have a key role to play. They want people to be good witnesses, but to not engage if they see a theft happening. The DA also announced her office has designated one attorney to handle nothing but retail theft cases. A car speeding toward a bridge from the American side at a U.S.-Canada checkpoint exploded in Niagara Falls today. Two people were killed. Multiple border crossings were closed as a precaution and airports put on alert, including SFO. But the FBI says there are no signs that this was a terror attack. Now we turn to the war in Israel. A planned hostage for prisoner swap with Hamas has been delayed until at least Friday. The U.S. helped broker the deal for a four-day pause in fighting. It could be extended if more hostages are released. The White House says there are 10 unaccounted for Americans that they think are hostages. As families prepare to gather around the table for Thanksgiving, many are thinking of those caught in the crossfire of the conflict in the Middle East. A Bay Area volunteer group is bringing people together to write letters of peace to local Israeli and Palestinian families affected by the conflict abroad. The handwritten notes share messages of hope, unity, and encouragement for people experiencing the hardships of war. Just to promote a spirit of togetherness and resilience in the face of adversity, um, just to show our solidarity with them too, that um, you know we're together even during this uh, really hard time, especially um, in the spirit of Thanksgiving too. All letters collected during the event will be sent to the Jewish Community Federation and the Palestinian American Coalition.